Hey guys, Meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Sunday mountain weather update. Let's go up to Bam Sunshine. We haven't checked in here in a while. They're reporting a couple of inches of new snow up there and temperatures in the 20s. It should be a beautiful day up there with this new shot of snow that came in. Now, I do have some additional snow in my forecast for uh, Bam Sunshine up the Marmot Basin, but it's not... Um, until we get further down the road. And there's a really actually a key time period for a lot of the West that's coming up just after Christmas. And I'll, we're going to talk a lot about that, that time frame, that window of opportunity. But here's the radar across the West. And you can actually look up there in the parts of BC, Canada, and see some of that snow sliding away, sliding to the south and away from the Banff Sunshine area. Looking across the West, some new moisture coming into the Pacific Northwest. Also, some rain snow continuing over parts of California, some precip across Tahoe with a pretty high rain snow line. This air mass has been warm. Um, let me just show you the northeast. Not much going on here. I don't have anything major in my forecast for the northeast, as I'll show you coming up. Um, let me give you the lay of the land. So this is water vapor satellite imagery here across the west low level. You can really see the contrast. A lot of dry air with oranges and reds showing up here. Um, the whites and the blues, that's going to be your moisture. And like I mentioned the last couple of days, there's a dance going on out here with a few different areas of low pressure. The key here is the whole, the bulk of the trough or dip in this, in this jet stream will eventually move into the west and will help to bring the storm track a little further to the south. And as the whole thing comes in, it should deliver colder air and bring the rain snow line to a much lower altitude or lower elevation across the west. And so that's one of the things I want to talk about in this forecast update. Here are my bullet points. So the key time period, I think we're going to see major snow accumulation for the Pacific Northwest, B.C., Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado between 1226 and probably 1230. Um, it looks like the storm track becomes much more active. We're going to bring in colder air, a colder period, which should help to pull the rain snow line down during that time period. And like I said, in the northeast, I don't have anything major. Okay, here is my snow timeline. Best odds of snow for the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, Interior, BC, and the northeast. So, for example, and I'm not going to go through all these dates, but look at the Wasatch. A lot of dates on here. So this afternoon, tonight, into tomorrow, light snow accumulation. It's been trending lighter and lighter for that. Light to moderate, late 24 into 25. So you could have some powder on Christmas. And then moderate, PM 26 into 27. Moderate 1228. Moderate 1230. So there are several shots of snow for the Wasatch. And Colorado, finally, only light on 1223. Light to moderate 1225. So could have powder on Christmas Day light to moderate 1227, and then moderate 1230. So finally, things are turning a little more active. And look at all of the chances for the Tetons. Tetons actually one of my bullseyes, and, and Idaho is one of my bullseyes. Um, so we'll look at all that coming up in this forecast. Let's uh, drill down a little bit here. So the forecast for Brighton, it's the forecast mediagram for Brighton, Utah, up there in Big Cottonwood Canyon. So here's the column for today, the 22nd. Um, there's the 23rd, there's the 24th, and there's the early uh, early on uh, Christmas Day 25th. So today, uh, this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow, very light snow accumulation, maybe an inch. That number is definitely trended down. Um, and leading up to that, maybe some gusts of 20 to 30 this afternoon. T high temps today at about 30. Tomorrow, a lot of 20s, maybe 31 by the afternoon. Then as we head towards Christmas Eve, the snow comes in into Christmas Day, we could be looking at four or five inches, maybe even six inches of accumulation through Little Cottonwood Canyon. And the winds on the 24th and the 25th may gust 25 to 30. Temperatures on the 24th, 33 for the high, and then quite a bit colder on Christmas Day. So actually some powder to look forward to. Let me take you into Colorado for the time height forecast. This is a forecast for humidity in the atmosphere. The green is the key here. That's what uh, we tend to look for because we want to see what moisture we've got to help generate snowfall. Um, you combine that with the wind forecast that is also overlaid. And this is really just a slice through all the layers vertically in the atmosphere for the next 72 hours. Timeline is at the bottom. You can read that from right to left. The, really what I see when I when I look at this is you've got a chance of snow, higher humidity levels and good lift coming in. I wouldn't say good, but it's it's some lift coming in between the 23rd 
and the 24th, and then another shot coming in 24, 25. So two different chances between now and Christmas. Um, I don't think it's going to be significant for the snow mass area, as I'll show you coming up, but at least it's something. I think if you were to go into the northern mountains of Colorado around Steamboat, Buffalo Pass, Cameron Pass, you'd have a much higher chance, flat tops. Um, the humidity would be higher. You'd have a higher chance, better lift of snow accumulation. All right, I want to talk about the jet stream briefly. So you're looking at uh, winds at about 30,000 feet, the forecast here. Uh, and again, there are two storm systems that I'm watching. I'm going to start the animation where you see the brighter colors. A lot of the pinks, that's a higher wind speed, typically associated with a storm passage coming through. So I'm going to put this into motion here. So here we are midday today. Now you can see the storm system coming in from California. Look at the jet and those brighter colors coming in, higher winds in the atmosphere, escorting in a storm system. This is late today. Okay, here's Monday morning. This is the 23rd. So like I was showing you, there is that snow chance between this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow, and the Wasatch. Snow chance for the Tetons and eventually into Colorado, especially in the northern mountains. And there it comes. This is early on the 23rd. There's midday on the 23rd, and then that moves away. Um, there's late on the 23rd. Here comes the next storm system. This is early on the 24th. You can see it coming into California in the west coast. This is a larger storm system right here. All right, here's midday on the 24th. You can look at the dip in the jet. That's the trough bringing in our storm system. Here we are by late on the 24th. Storm system moving into the interior. Um, here's early on the 25th. So this is the morning hours of Christmas Day. Look at the trough, the dip in the jet here with our storm system through Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, moving into Colorado. Uh, and here we are by midday on Christmas. And so that storm system definitely moving through at that point. Okay, let me, now what I did with my snow forecast is I broke it down into two time periods. So all of today through the 25th, and then I'm going to go beyond the 25th to show you that active, that really active time period. So between today and the 25th, all of that time frame, um, about a foot for a lot of the, uh, the Sierra. The Pacific Northwest does really well with 1 to 2 feet. Interior BC, anywhere from probably 6 to 10 inches of accumulation. Less as you drop down into Banff, Sunshine, and head up into Marmon Basin. Um, the numbers through Idaho, anywhere from probably 5 to 8 inches, uh, potentially um, 4 to 8 across a lot of northwest Montana, uh, probably 6 to 10 for the Tetons, 8, 9, 10 inches for the Wasatch, and, and I, I sort of went on the high side for the Wasatch. Uh, it may be a little bit less than that, but we'll, go, we'll be optimistic. Um, for Colorado, anywhere from 3 to potentially eight inches, but a lot of that's over the northern mountains, three to six, I-70, less as you go south into the southern mountains. Okay, the second time period, this is 1226 through the first of, of the new year into 2025. This will be a pretty active time period. Um, so you can see what I'm talking about, potentially a foot of snow or more for a lot of the Wasatch, maybe two feet for the Tetons, two feet for Idaho, um, about a foot for parts of Montana, potentially 8 to 12 for a lot of interior BC, and look at the Pacific Northwest. We could be looking at 2 to 3 feet during this time period. From Whistler down to Baker, Crystal, Rainier, Timberline, Bachelor, 8 to 12 from Mammoth up to uh, Tahoe, a bit more up in Shasta, maybe Mount Ashland gets over a foot. In Colorado, if you're in the central and northern mountains, you're looking at potentially a foot or more of accumulation during this time period. So that's why I said, I think this could be a key time period where a lot of places just get hammered with some snow. And again, this could be a colder time period. I mean, you can see the bullseyes, Wasatch, Tetons, Northern, Central Northern Mountains of Colorado, up through Idaho, Northwest Montana, Pacific Northwest, Interior BC. All right, let's go to the Northeast. And again, I don't have anything major. All of today through the first of the new year, maybe three to six inches of accumulation. That'll probably do it through New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. All right, guys, we'll end on the big map here. I'll run you through this again. So all of today through the 25th looks like this. And then the second time period is bigger uh, and colder, 1226 through 1-1. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.